Hi YouTube, this is Matt Macintosh, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up your file ready for render to texture. So as we can see here, I've got a high res version of an arm made from a robot, and this currently has 5 million polys in the entire subtool. And what I want to do is just export that, um, and if I go over to Silo, we can see that I've got a retop version. Uh, this thing is only 1200 polys. It's got mapping coordinates ready for the textures to be applied. Uh, and what I also need to do with that is save that as a selected object. So what I'm going to do now is just show you that I've got that information into 3ds Max. Uh, it is actually 10 million polys and I've used this uh, plugin, um, a script, in order to import in the polypaint information on this surface. You could apply this using your own material editor, uh, but I've transferred this from ZBrush. So what I want to do now is unhide my low res version. And what is really important with regards to render to texture is that everything on your low res version sits exactly over the top of the high res. Otherwise you're gonna get all sorts of issues going on. So ensure that it is spot on over the top of it, the scale, the positioning, everything. Right, so now go to your render to texture window. And if you open this up, um, what you will see is a load of tick boxes. We need to enable it. We need to pick the uh, element we want to uh, capture the information from. This may take some time, so be prepared to wait. So after you've been waiting for it to load up, uh, what you can then do is you get this blue cage around it. Um, you go to the shading aspect to see how it's interacting with the mesh. Uh, point to point to get a better capture. And then if you click on reset, what it does is it sucks that blue cage back onto the mesh, but you get elements of the high res sticking out of the low res. So if you use this push amount, what you can do is uh, enlarge the cage so that it sits around the entirety of the mesh. Uh, you don't want it going too far, otherwise you get weird results. Uh, so something like this would be okay. And then potentially you could go into its uh, individual cage uh, vertexes or vertices even and start pulling them around if you need to. Um, so you can edit the cage if you want to get different results from it. Uh, what I'd say though is give it a render first and see what happens with it. Um, you'll know if there's there's errors on there or not. So um, once you've got that, uh, what you need to do, I mean, I've already got a, a normal map on here. You could delete that off or you could add on additional maps, uh, like a complete map to get the um, diffuse textures. Um, then what you could potentially do is uh, look to incorporate uh, a different renderer such as mental array and this will give you options to other um, bakes such as uh, an ambient occlusion map so all you do is you click on add and as you can see it's chucked up ambient occlusion map here there's a bunch of other things as well but we're not going to look at those um, we're just going to go with the normal map it's a 2048 textures uh, size at the moment you can change that around to 1024 or 512s it's got some other kind of uh, scales in here, but we need 2048. Uh, you can save it where you want to, and I recommend saving it as a target file, and then you just click on render. Depending on which renderer you've used to kick out your normal map um, will take different amounts of time. This isn't a normal map. Go to your file location that you've saved it at and open that target up, and this is a normal map. It should have blues and purples bits of green in there um, and as you can see what it's done is it's captured all that high res information from my uh, high res model uh, so you end up with a, a number of textures that you could either overlay and put together or you could go into this and tidy up or re-render if you need to uh, but that's how you go about capturing a, a normal map from 3ds max hope that's been useful if it has been uh, please like and subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for future videos. Thanks for watching.